Once more, the trucks get ready to roll towards Chungking. American engineers, headed by Brigadier General Lewis A. Pick on the right, have, by sheer dogged determination, forged the last link connecting the hard-fighting Chinese with desperately needed supplies. Pick's Pike, the stretch of newly opened route between Wanting on the Burma Road in China and Lido in Burma, has been named after General Pick, who said when the project seemed hopelessly defeated, the road is going to be built. Mud, rain, and malaria be damned. And now, the impossible accomplished, the vital supplies go through. Bumper to bumper they roll, and service is well organized all along the route. Here is a gas station in the middle of the wilderness, a land of towering mountains, swift tumbling streams, and dense jungle never before traveled by white men. Insects, blazing heat, and the monsoon presented heartbreaking obstacles to the project. But these Signal Corps and newsreel pictures show the first convoy going into the Burmese city of Michina, one of the most bitterly fought over points on the new highway. Heading the long line is General Pick, who, with General Stilwell, gets major credit for the victory. Since long before the Christian era, the tribes of Eastern Asia have many times fled before the onrush of the invader. Today, with savage Japs at their heels, China's people are again in flight. Thousands of war-weary refugees from the Hengyang and Kuailin areas clog the roads on the way to safety. Expressionless, silent people fleeing in animal-like despair, too exhausted to complain knowing only that the enemy is but a few miles behind, that they must push on, pausing only for the minimum in food and rest. <music> Signal Corps and Air Force cameramen photograph these pictures of the longest trek in the history of the present Chinese war, a temporary setback for a people that will never admit defeat. Governor Dewey speaks in Washington at the Lincoln Day dinner of the Republican Party. It's obvious that we cannot and must not risk another great war. It's equally obvious that aside from adequate military forces and bases for our defense in the future, our only hope of avoiding war lies in effective international cooperation for peace. It's perfectly obvious to the rest of the world, and it ought to be to us, that America has staggeringly outproduced every other nation on Earth. Our 130 million people have produced many of the winning instruments of war for Great Britain, Russia, China, as well as for ourselves. It's obvious to the rest of the world, and it ought to be to us, that this is because of the enormous initiative and inventive genius which springs from the very heart of our system. Ours is a system that rewards achievement in which men can create and build with the full knowledge that they and their families will benefit as well as society as a whole. Ours has been a system whereby labor is free to work, to organize, and to share into the limit of its productive capacity in the good things of life which are produced by everybody. The very heart of that system is the classic liberal concept that every man is his own master, and that government exists to keep men free. An armistice is in the making at Saint Nazaire as members of the German garrison meet Americans to discuss terms of a three-hour truce under which French civilians may be evacuated from the besieged port. Flying the international flag of mercy, the train prepares for the happy refugees who have endured months of unremitting siege with unwelcome Nazi troops. Signal Corps pictures show several thousand of these tragic victims of war, rescued from hunger and bombs, on their way to sanctuary and safety with family and friends. That war dog has become a pretty tough citizen during his service for Uncle Sam, and it's no wonder. (laughs) 
A dog can stand so much, and one look at that kisser, and it's right in the furrow's face. But there comes a time in a canine's life when he's got to learn his manners again and get ready for all his good old lovable peacetime tricks. At a dog dude ranch, these veterans are getting ready to go home. The signal call camera follows the pooch veteran on the last lap to the place he has fought to defend. It's been a long time, but this is it. Home. What he was raised for and what he has served for. It was worth it, wasn't it? The basketball season hits its peak with the game at New York's Madison Square Garden between Notre Dame in the light jerseys and New York University. This is the brand of basketball that chalks up 126 points between them. The 18,000 on hand see the Irish go out for their 10th win in 12 meetings and the lightning fast Notre Dame team has the violet on the run right from the start. This game developed into a thriller from the very first play. The best brand is played in New York this season. Sparked by players like Big Vince Borilla, he's only six feet four, Notre Dame was unstoppable. Here's an example of the play that spelled victory for the Irish. NYU stabs and stabs at the basket, but Notre Dame finally grabs the ball, comes down the court, outguessing their opponents at every step. Passing like this, leading to the final shot, sums up their 66-60 victory. 